So what is CMMC 2.0 and what are the levels? We have this handy chart which compares and contrasts version one to version two. And this is this was fun this time last year because everybody thought that eliminating two levels would somehow make this easier. It really didn't change a thing. <laughs> There's the, the optional 20 or the plus 20 processes that have been taken out, but it is still at its core an assessment against NIST special publication 800-171. Um, that if you have CUI, again, controlled and classified information in your environment as part of, if you're a manufacturer, the manufacturing process. If it's got some IP or designs or even software code, that's going to be CUI. You need to have that protected. You're going to be shooting for level two. And level two is going to also involve a um, the uh, three or C three PAO. Um, other than that, they did drop the the processes. I can tell you that as an RPO, we're still going to push for some of the processes. The one that we like the most is documentation that there's a committed budget to. Um, establish and maintain your control environment. So all the things we're looking at in 800-171, we want to see that there's actually budget so that you know that those controls will continuously be available and be operational throughout the time that you have CUI in your environment. So when will CMMC 2.0 come into effect? This is the thing that everybody's really been asking there's been a lot of speculation and heck uh, i'm pretty sure there's a, a book out in las vegas that is trying to guess when this is going to happen too <laughs> um so you will see because it hasn't been set in stone by the dod when it's going to be happening what rulemaking is is they've taken the cmmc requirements that you just saw and they are deciding when and how that's going to be implemented into the supply chain so there'll be additional instructions on when and how it's not going to be what what is cmmc it is uh, 800 171. so the guidance we got this time last year was that dod is going to be going through rulemaking companies will be required to be compliant once that becomes into an effect comes into effect. As I mentioned, Sherney, Tyler, and I were all up in DC last week at the ecosystem, and the general consensus is that rulemaking will be finished in some point in quarter two with the estimated target of May 2023. Why is that important? Because once it's the rulemaking is finished and the companies are required to comply, you will have 60 days until the requirements will be written into the contracts and required. What we see happening, and again, this is speculation based on good information, but speculation, it should be used to give you a rough guide that the um, you are going to need to have uh, your compliance in order by the start of fiscal year 24 which is October 1st, 2023. That's federal fiscal year. So the timeline we're telling people is to, right at this point, anticipate that rulemaking is going to be complete. Through July, you're going to be seeing contracts written that will be effective on October 1st, and that you need to be addressing your plans of action. Remember, the plan of action milestones is your plan to address gaps that have been identified in the pre-assessment process and actually after the assessment if the C3PAO identifies gaps. So um, there we go. I'd like to show this. This is like a blast from the past. This time we've just traveled back uh, to November of 2021 where I was pointing to the start of fiscal year 24 based on the information we had at that time. And I'd like to emphasize that because um, rulemaking for part 32 of the CFR 
as well as DFARS Part 48, are all going to be done sometime in Q2 of 23. And that means that there's going to, this is going to get serious and real on October 1st of 2023 or fiscal year 24. Uh, that was the original timeline document, by the way, that I used to talk about how they're doing the crawl, walk, run approach, and they're not doing the crawl, walk, run approach with version two. So a lot of people thought that that would make things easier. Actually, I think the crawl, walk, run would have been better, but it's essentially going to be a light switch now. So we are waiting for rulemaking to finish in summary. And when it, in summary, we're waiting for rulemaking to finish. And when it does, it's going to be required. That's not a lot of time. We talked about 300,000 entities. They're going to be rushing to do this. If you have been procrastinating at all, now's the time to stop procrastinating and get to work and engage and start your implementation for CMMC um, if you haven't already. And what we're going to talk about uh, next are the requirements for CMMC. Uh, what is FCI and CUI to some extent? And then um, get into how we can help you with the implementation. So here's that slide again. And I've already talked about it a little, so we don't have to spend too much time. But we are um, estimating that most of the clients in this audience are going to be shooting for level two. Some may be level one. Level one, the difference is the same as it was initially. Those with only federal contract information um, can do level one, and it can be an annual self-assessment. Level two, there is an option for some organizations based on uh, the type of CUI that they may be able to actually do a self-assessment also. What is a self-assessment? It is you reporting in a similar fashion to what you're doing right now with the SPRS reporting system. Um, but the and not necessarily involving the C3PAO to get the certification. But honestly, if you're at level two, I don't see a case, and this rulemaking will give us a little more guidance. I don't see a case um, to really differentiate those that are allowed to do just self-assessment. So in addition to that May timeline, I'm telling you that if you have CUI in your environment, you're going to want to engage Tago, and you're going to want to set up the assessment with data brackets um, and get working on that because of those requirements.